Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Thanks for being with us again here on our exotic, easy, emerging islands of Hawaii. <laughs> and we're broadcasting here live from Honolulu, our capital. And DeSoto and Martin are on our relentless search that we don't want to give up on seeing if this built environment can't be as generous and gentle as the uh, natural environment truly is. True. And that was the case some not that long ago, mid-century. That's true. And so we're going to keep revisiting that and mm -hmm. then going from there and learning for the future from correct. the past. Correct, correct, correct. So the next picture is reconnecting us to the last show that we had because we were reflecting on way out west, that yep. Makaha development and what to do, right. and that conflict today that you probably have bigger problems than having the poorest of the poor poor in there, you know? Yeah, and right. so uh, revisiting that, um, I'm always also very close to that subject because some of my emerging mentees mm -hmm. uh, who can't afford to live in town, they yes. live out there and they have to leave at 3 a.m. in the morning to hit the traffic to be in school by four and then to sleep again under their, under their table. So um, maybe they live at the condominiums out there because they're cheaper out there, right? Because you know you have to drive. There's a price tag for that. Absolutely. And the other show we want to re remember is David Liang here, one of our emerging um, Talents who was sharing with us that how his grandmother lives. That's right. Her grandmother lives in easy breezy social right. mid-century housing. Correct. That Clock works pretty well. Street. Exactly. So why don't we talk about the young ones, the emerging ones, okay. you know, and where do they live? You know. That's right. If they are UH students, UH Manoa. Exactly. Where you teach. I do. I That's do. true. That's and, true. And we already, you know, had pointed out where they might end up. And we said, hopefully not. And this is this building that you see right, right next to me there. There you go. And so if we can get the next picture, we were talking about the, their promises on the construction fence. And I was saying, you know, does this even deserve to uh, carry the name Holly? Because right. that's something that's pretty loaded with culture. Exactly. That, you that know, being the Hawaiian word for not only house, but in a general sense, building. Exactly. And does it deserve to be used the other warrior and chief and things I'm sorry, I still can't pr even pronounce, right? <laughs> it's perfectly all right. So, but maybe we're just like being uh, suspicious and maybe mean or something. So we said, let's see, maybe it has some core values that we might not right. have discovered. So let's Correct. go and Correct. next picture. And examine this building. And check it out more. So here it is. I pulled this from the, uh, the website of developer. Brand new, opening pretty soon. And you can see that the picture on the top is once again how it will look like then pretty soon when it's finished. And just on the way here, I looked at a building that ends up looking similar. And this is the affordable housing by Howard Hughes on Ward Avenue. Correct. Which we said it wants to look interesting Correct. and sort of dynamic. Right. Yet and not just be completely smooth and un exactly. without any kind of differentiation exactly. on its facade. But, but it's actually just a masquerade, right? Because the function behind that does not support right. that dynamism. Right. Because if we go and, and the same, so it's it's a masquerade or a makeup and a little bit. I've you know hardly seen students like that, and I'm close to them, so right. I don't know. Well, those are models. That's they, why. Oh, they, models. Those are not those are not real students. All right. Those are paid models. All right. That's, I'm sorry to disillusion you, All but that's right. the way it is. I keep on looking. All right. So next picture, we go even more inside. So the next picture, please, is uh, a floor plan. Well, sometime we'll get to that next picture. Yeah. Um, but one thing I wanted to say was, and this is something that you and I just discussed before this, mm -hmm. this is not a University of Hawaii sponsored building. Mm -hmm. This building is in fact a private development yeah. that is being aimed at students, yeah. uh, but it is not built by the, it's not developed by the state, it's not developed by, mm -hmm. it's just a private development that it's near the UH, yeah. and so it's for students. And we, we have that nice term for that off campus. Off campus but it's housing. Right there you off go. the edge, because campus pretty much starts pretty soon to that. So this is how they will live. And check out the price tags at the very bottom. This is pretty steep. 
and check out what you get. I mean, this looks to me like could be anywhere. It's a hotel room, a boarding house, mm -hmm. or something like that, where you can. It's like a combination of a right. hotel and a and a condominium. So you were saying these are like in the realm of eighteen hundred a month. Absolutely. And the next picture, if you you know mingle, you can basically get it for a little cheaper. Right. You know, but at the end, not much. And then if you're really privileged, you get a corner room, and then you get two windows. Two windows. How fancy is that? That's very nice. Uh huh. I think so. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I don't have to live there. <laughs> so next picture is going to show the what we call the amenities. Yes, right? that's right. Loaded with amenities. So we're in Hawaii, so we don't have to work outside because it's always snowy here and rainy that's right. and, it's so and too hot, cold. like in Arizona where that's I used right. to be. So we just work out inside, yep. indoors, and then we go to the roof terrace. But most likely, only if I have this key card, oh, I'm sure. it gives me access. I'm right? sure. I'm sure. So the bum on the street, you cannot know, come cannot, in or maybe the the machines. student whose parents are not rich enough, they probably mm -hmm. got to stay outside. Or they I think probably that's, can you know, bring a guest, right? Possibly, but this is very much the way a lot of buildings are now, and we know that that's been a considerate, that's yeah. been a subject of discussion yeah. and some controversy uh, as well. Absolutely. So talking controversies, next picture is us examining the architectural skin of that uh, hermetic organism. And it reminds me, and hi mom, when she back in temperate climate told me to layer. Mm -hmm. And today is a little, that's why you wear a jacket. It's, it's a little chilly it's outside. It's a little chilly in the wind outside. But one screen that you wear right. does it, right? That's right. And you don't need to have multiple layers. Uh, in Germany, however, you have to wear, as you were saying, you wear a t-shirt, you wear yeah. a shirt, you wear mm -hmm. a sweater, you wear a jacket, you wear Absolutely. all these layers yeah. because of coldness. And that's what this building is wearing here. You can see all these layers that that's are building right. up and up. And another analogy, because you said the models and they were so nicely visagisted, yes, you know, there's multiple are. layers of makeup. You that's exactly on, right. right as well. So as you can tell, next picture, we don't really like that too much. So let's do something that we maybe, you could actually do this because the building tectonically is like Le Corbusier, mm -hmm. the, the domino house, it's like pilotis, as he called the pillars, the posts, the columns, and then he put floor slabs. Correct. And this is what our most activist journalist, Kurt Sandman, calls La Nice. So we can reverse this process and at some point, just like you put off your makeup, you know, mm -hmm. in the evening or at the rest of your life where you decide you don't want to fake yourself, you just want to come across be as your real self. Being, exactly, being uh, appreciated for what you truly are with your values. And so, and, and I can point out too that uh, by touching over here, by mm -hmm. touching these, these walls right here, mm -hmm. the point is that those, those exterior walls are not load bearing. No. They are a skin on the outside. Okay. So by taking them off, as you're saying, the building is still intact. The building is not going to collapse. So come on, strip them off. You can do that. That's what we're doing. Can that's can what do we're that. doing. I can do that. Yeah, you can do that. We have this the first time, so we got to still play, we gotta play with, with this. Here. Right. We but that's what out. you've done in these two pictures, is exactly. to show it going from exactly. more exterior to less exterior. Exactly. And let's do the next uh, picture, which also does that from the other side. This looks from down the ocean, from Mackay, and the same thing. We wish it would undress. and get off all these layers to the next picture, eventually look obviously higher because that was an early stage. But this is what, you know, Kurt calls the stack lanai. It protects you from the sun, from yep. the rain. What else do you need? A little layer, a little jacket, a little screen. And you're sad. David Rockwood has done a fantastic show about the multitude of possibilities of screen that we can make on the Correct. island. Correct. The whole thing. Or we can do, uh, next picture, we can revisit a project that we uh, continue primitiva. to present, right? And, and this, is, this is about that we here intentionally keep the personal space confined, right. but multifunctional. Yes. Because once again, if you're in Hawaii, you don't want to be stuck in your, in your hotel room, I'm already saying, in your dorm room right, yeah, for yeah, all yeah. the time. And the next picture is um, what is happening there. Well, what we've got going on, as you were pointing out, the, the, prim the uh, personal spaces are small, mm -hmm. and the larger spaces or the, the uh, public spaces are mm -hmm. bigger. Mm -hmm. So there's more interaction, and what you said too is that there's not only interaction, the freedom of that movement, mm -hmm. but that's also where you've got a restaurant, you've got farmer's market, yeah. you've got stuff yeah, going yeah. on. So there are reasons to go out yeah. and not be necessarily always yeah. inside your And here box. we even have that on the floors, and I could not find an entire floor plan of that invasive holly right. thing. Because what do they want to show? They want to show the minimum width, hermetic, right. dark, 
Right. Stuffy because the hallway, public spaces don't exist. They, the public they don't spaces matter. are just a hallway, exactly. and it's the individual spaces. Exactly. Primitiva, on the other hand, emphasizes big open spaces mm -hmm. versus smaller mm -hmm. pr private mm -hmm. spaces. Mm -hmm. And we call these here the, the communal spaces, which are even sort of injected into each floor plan. Right. And then even more, you already mentioned it, next picture here is basically the, the public Correct. spaces. Correct, in the yeah. market, in the restaurant, and whatever else. And they're splendid, and they're basically inclusive, they're for everyone, right? right? right. I mean, that's how we dream it, but let's wake up again, let's go to the next picture. This is what we have conf to confront. And you made an interesting observation about that already pretty narrow street, that. which you're basically frequenting quite often. Exactly. Right? And I often drive on that street, which is on to the side of this new Halimahana. And mm -hmm. you can see that in the large picture. Mm -hmm. The problem is that that street is already inadequate for the traffic that's on it. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't look as though that new building is making more room for cars. Normally, mm -hmm. we don't like to make room for cars, but mm -hmm. in this case, because there's going to be a lot more traffic generated by the residents in that building, I am thinking that that's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. However, all right, I beyond think my touch. I think we're at the point where half of the show we got to bring some hope back, you know. Yeah. So let's do that, and we actually do this already with a little picture on the right side that you saw the previous page. Is we're actually looking back at UH. Mm -hmm. We're actually going on campus now. Yep. And from your exquisite archives, you provided this here right. from an era where you looked like at the I bottom left. I look like that. Left, so there's right? that. There's that little picture in the upper left corner. That's me at the age of seven with our 1960 Plymouth. We lived on the mainland for one year, so that's me in the snow. I don't like snow. But at the same time, this is a few years after that. This is what the University of Hawaii had begun to look like with an increased level of buildings. And this aerial picture is from the middle 1960s. And we're going to be talking about the area where I can put my hand right now, which is kind of over here, which is where the dorms are. Yeah, and if and you go a little further, those. reach out a little further with your right hand. right there. Go further. you got to reach uh, out all the way with your hand uh, to the building behind. Yeah, we're still, we're still down practicing. Down below, down below. So that's okay. right. The building right next to me here, <clears throat> mm -hmm. where my fist is, is Freer Hall. Okay. That's so what we're going to talk about. Let's get the that's next, next. Let's get the next picture. So our next picture is of Freer Hall. And uh, that was a women's dorm. This mm -hmm. is seen from East West Road in 1961. Mm -hmm. That was built as a women's dorm in 1952. Mm -hmm. And several things that we're going to talk about. But as you were pointing out to me, on this side of the building, there are some eyebrows, as yep. you said, yep. which provide some level of shade. But this is the side of the building that doesn't get as much sun. Exactly. And so what they do have on this side is more wind and rain coming mm -hmm. down from mm -hmm. the Ko'olau Mountains to Manoa Valley. And some say that's why whoever created us gave us these eyebrows. Gave us eyebrows. Because and if our... it rains or we sweat, sweat. it's not going to drip in our exactly. eye. It's going to exactly. go around. That's right? why we have eyebrows. And that's what these architects what these here are. understood right. pretty much. Right? And so if you go to the next picture on the other side of Freer Hall, mm -hmm. this is, again, there's more of an over hang for more protection from the sun, but this is also a protected area from the wind and rain, so there's public space there. Mm -hmm. And it's a low-level, low-rise building, and in those time period, that time period, nothing like this was air-conditioned. Mm -hmm. It was ridiculously expensive. Mm -hmm. So they have jealousies, they have easy breezy wind flow going through. Yep, yep. That's how they're ventilated. Absolutely. And I found another picture to complement your exquisite one, which is the next one which I found online, which shows the lobby right. in Freer Hall, which is this sort of exotic, you know, easy breezy, and the way they're dressed. Just look at like a dress code, a dress code. Mm -hmm. You can see that the relationship yeah. between, you know, sheathing yourself and yes. your architecture is yes. basically consistent. Right? right. Tropical plants indoors that you see on the, on the uh, left hand side of the picture, plain polished concrete floor and then yeah. a lot of open space and a modernist stripped down interior. Exactly. And that looks to me like, I mean, the statehood had just been initiated, right? This is right before. This before is that. before. This is even before that. This is even before I that. I mean, this is, this is that dream, desired sure place is. you sure wanted to be. Exactly. And when you came there, you were something totally different. You lived a different mm -hmm. life, a different lifestyle than back on the mainland exactly. with that snow, for example, that I've we just saw that you tasted. Yeah, year and had I've enough of it. it. Been I've there, done it. it, right? Done it, done it. So now we have to show something really shocking because that pretty nice building had been pretty much leveled, yeah. and unfortunately, not that long ago, about a decade ago or so, mm -hmm. and pretty much replaced by this here. And it's still called Freer Hall. 
No, I call this fear hole, oh, right? Oh, that's right. It went because from fear it, it, it to fear. It still has a lot of fear in me because yeah. this is like the worst of the worst that you can think of. This is pretty much a, could be a Marriott or something like yeah, that. Good. All these EFIS castles. EFIS stands for Exterior Finishing Insulation System. If that yeah. even has it on, they probably didn't even insulate it. No. And then you got these little windows in there, and this is pulled it from the web top right is how the student you know, right. rooms basically look like. And then, of course, you know, to legitimize it here, what do they do? Well, this is the thing that's happening now with a lot of buildings. They put on this chevron design on the exterior, which is a which is an exterior decorative element, which is really popular right now. Um, we're conjecturing that it has some pretend connection to Hawaiian mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. whatever it is, it's sort of a it's sort of a cliche of the moment. And so we made a differentiation between off-campus housing, privately developed, and on-campus housing. This is on-campus housing, so it's UH, but UH at that point got chicken shitty and basically wasn't brave enough to be the client and basically outsourced it, what I heard, and gave it to a private developer. Right. And if uh, in the 21st century, unfortunately, where development is not driven by culture as it used to be in the 20th century, uh, half especially, uh, then that's what you get. Privatized. Exactly, privatized and uh, just bad. And they should have known better because they had something next door that we want to primarily right. talk about. Correct. And you uh, provided another uh, pristine image from your right. archive. So here again, and here's our, here's our 60s view, UH. And in the, um, right in the center of the picture, you can see the gateway building or the gateway housing, mm -hmm. which is the dorm that we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. In the upper right corner, you see Elvis and Miley, mm -hmm. Chad and Miley, looking down over Honolulu with the iconic Ala Moana building so, in the background yeah. there. So what we're trying to say with this you know, comparison is that um, what the Ala Moana building was for more town, right. that icon of innovation right. and growth and, and space age and technology, space age was that gateway. And then now you can actually understand its, its, its name because it literally looks like a funnel. Correct. Because it's like an, depending on how you look at it. And it's also at the gateway to the east-west center, which is. was a new structure at that time, a new development at that time. Which I think truly deserves to be an own show, it so does. we're gonna do that at some it point. Does. And they were also, they were uh, sort of in proximity yes. uh, location-wise, but development-wise, they're totally different entities. That's right. Right. Right, and you know that. So let's look there. at that building a little closer with another exquisite image that you provided here. Right, and I want to point out that it looks as though the exterior of this building has those kind of tilted out panels as though mm -hmm. they are permanently mm -hmm. installed like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if you look closer, those are windows that have been manually opened by the people in the room. Some of those, as you can see, are shut. So this building, as you were pointing out, has a dynamic facade mm -hmm. that changes according to yeah. what people yeah, are yeah. doing to it, as opposed to a static dead one. Yeah. And the Hale Mahana has a checkerboard facade, mm -hmm. but this one has an actual changing facade. Exactly. So it's a it's a biclimatically performative ornament, right. we can say. Right. And that is right. literally and figuratively cool. And um, I'm a really sexy pair of buildings here. Yeah. So let's go inside. Next picture, which we did because we visited here. This was like about last semester or a year ago with a studio. Uh, we, we went in there. And we walked all the way up. So the stairs, uh, we're going to dedicate a show to that phenomenon right. as well, that only here you can make exterior staircases. Right. And thanks to Howard Wig, we can do it again Yay. because we changed the invasive international building code and made right. an appendix to the, our tropical conditions. So Allows we want to do that. Exterior stairs. And it's a lot of fun to go up and down these external staircases. And look and, at the view. And the view, and they also make this sort of iconic, they, they yeah. give this, this iconic character of the building, they which do. you see from far away. I mean, this is the same picture, this is why it's so grainy, because I took this where we showed out the problematic, yeah. soon to be problematic, Alley Street. You know, yes. it's that yes. far away, but you can still see that iconographic right. feature and the nature of exterior exterior. Exactly. Right. And I also found from student housing this floor plan. This reminds me so much of my years yeah. in, or my year in the dorm in Lincoln, Nebraska, so in temperate climate with that snow. Yes. And it was the same very classic kind of layout, 
the room absolutely minimized to just that hallway enough so that two people can get into their bed. Mm -hmm. And then there is a desk that everyone sits there and studies all day. Maybe yeah. not so much a case these days anymore. I don't know how contemporary <laughs> this still these is, although they have today, to study. Yeah. Holly um, uh, Manoa goes a step further, which we will talk about in that show, and basically makes the bathrooms and the kitchen shared. Yeah. This one here is more conventional that the bathroom, but it's shared, so it's, it's again, it's more efficient and effective. But the point is we're in Hawaii, so only when you have to be there, you're going to be there, and otherwise you're going to be outside. out and about, right? right? And so next picture is how you access it through these open hallways here. And I want to point out that the open hallways are on the Makai side. They are protected from the wind and the rain. Mm -hmm. Normally, the trade winds are bringing the Manoa mm -hmm. rain down mm -hmm. against the Maukai side of mm -hmm. the building. This is the other side, so you're not exposed to that in the winter. Mm -hmm. So this architect knew what they're... And, and yeah. with Don Hibbert, we're still searching. We have some uh, ideas yeah. who the architects might have been, but we're not at the end of the research, so we're not going to say not, not to say. confuse people. We right. can say that in a but later on. But they were on, local we architects. Out. They were Whoever local they were, architects. And they knew this. Exactly. Because they knew about the so Next picture, again, whatever they did was performative. And so here, the hallway is also shading. It's a shading device. We're arguing, you know, because this was for research for designing uh, own student dorm right. projects. We we're going to conclude the show with, uh, although this was another class here. But we were uh, debating if you could have more openings. And, you know, only really good work you can uh, improve. So who are we to Correct. sort of judge here, these modern to masters here? Right. But uh, the next picture, at some uh, place, the architect has done that. This is a, a gathering room here where you can see these uh, um, uh, basically awning windows, jealousies to the Mauka side, which is pretty much north. And then you can see that sliding door to the south. And the next picture is going to point out these, these awning windows more that I know had been replaced yes. when they renovated this yes. about a while ago. But we know based on that old picture that they did originally have windows like and this. They had something like that. They were, I was told they were more jealousy like, but never mind. I mean, they're easy breezy and they try to keep the rain out. Right. So this is something you got to manage. So the next picture is then looking how this looks like from below. And, and look, is, you're perched right on one of those. I, I'm sitting on that ledge right, here. And yeah. what it also shows is this sort of uh, participatory play in yeah. the facade that in these hermetic buildings, the developers try so hard Correct. to mimic. But it's frozen, right, as you yes. pointed out, where it's here, it's, it's alive. This I is, am on this one is, of those myself. This is, and if you're on these, since we're standing there anyways, yeah. let's take a closer look. Because for a while I've been thinking these modern masters would have non, not done anything that wasn't necessary. They wouldn't have done yeah. decor. So I was right. thinking these sort of in plan, triangularly shaped eyebrows, lids must have a function. If, it, if it's not their function yet, I can see it could be retrofitted like that. If you put like a little L profiles towards the edge and let them not touch each other right. at that corner, it would basically shed off the rain Correct. and funnel it through that nose. And that's the furthest away from the window. So Correct. you're basically pr uh, rain providing or rain sheltering your, your window. And, and how clever and up to these days cool is that? And next picture, so uh, the owner, uh, which is also my employer, UH, basically recognizes that. To the left one is a picture they took, and they had a professional doing that. There are no shifting lines. And I put that little north arrow in there so we know. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an uh, upside down V right. that the open sides basically facing south right. and these glazed facades basically face north. They do slightly west or east depending on the one. Right. But that is still a very bioclimatic way yes. to position the building. So the right. gatewaying wasn't the primarily or the only reason. It was multiple reasons as Correct. these masters were doing And the it. air can go through on either side. The air can be funneled between the buildings and then go around it on either end too. Exactly. And that's again the trade wind, the yeah. normal trade wind yeah. pattern yeah. That where these are situated. Yeah. And the gentleman on the right picture at the center there is someone who was helping us and showing his buildings. It's Hiram Payo. He's an architect AIA. He has worked for the private sector in town, is now uh, um, our representative at student services and student, at student housing. And as per his self-education, and um, he basically um, uh, graduated uh, with an expertise in bioclimatic design. And he says yeah. this building is causing him less trouble and yeah. maintenance costs because it's just like 
you know, to the spot. Right. And the pomo cake on the other side, yes. that hermetic thing, is nothing but complaints about, oh, my AC isn't correct. Exactly. Oh, my filters need to be replaced. Yeah, that's right. That's you know, right. all these issues. So, yeah, again, that tells us um, why not going back to that. Correct. And we always conclude the show with something promising here. So, together with Hiram, we were looking at potential uh, developments for student housing um, sort of on the edge of campus, and there were potential sites here that we were looking at. And so we want to look at two sides, and these are the number three and the number two. We want to look at the number three first, which is basically right below these uh, circular dorms on uh, Dole Street. Yes. And the next picture shows the solution. And, and I showed this to you before, so what was your impression? Of this well, one of the, what the, the point of this building is that it is built next to a cliff. Mm -hmm. And it is built not directly touching the cliff, but it's very similar to the way the Sheraton Maui was built at Kaanapali in the early 1960s, mm -hmm. in that it, because it is next to this geographical or geological formation, it is not so intrusive on the environment because actually it's set lower than that. Mm -hmm. You were pointing out that there's space between the building and the cliff so that that's part of the experience of living in the building mm -hmm. and that again it is not just sticking way up mm -hmm. but kind of hidden. Yeah, absolutely. And then the top right we're investigating in David Rockwood's, you know, Plato year for getting crazy about screens. So yeah. they're like for that little weather protection you need Here's an example for using local resources and doing these screens. Yeah. And the next picture is that other side that's actually next to I.M. Pay's dorms that we're going to feature in the, yeah. one of the next shows. And it's basically Diamond Head side of that, where there's basically a creek and you yes. don't see any side yet, but you'd, all you see is jungle. Yeah. And how do you feel about that proposal? Well, what you, you pointed out something very interesting. The purpose of this is for, first of all, housing for students. And the students would live in those regular structures. But you also said that there are a lot of what you term nomads, which we also call homeless people, mm -hmm. who are living in this space. And your students said, OK, let's have the homeless people live under these structures the way they want to. And the students live inside the structures. And so they're on this cliffside. So they're sort of sticking out. And they've got a space underneath mm -hmm. them. And people live above them, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. So we're very inclusive, as I understand the nature of the culture, the local culture well, here. Well, we initially. want to be, yeah, right. There you and go. That, that was be, true, though. Yeah, that's very no, true. That's no. very and, true. And it should be true again. It shouldn't be this sort of invasive, you know, coming from the, I shouldn't say mainland, but it's more like it's the Western civilization yeah, that is. becomes exclusive. That's and right. If you have the money, you can do. That's right. But they don't. They dismiss what's really so special about us, us in is, Hawaii, right? That is. Too. So let's basically applaud and encourage the emerging generation to do these things differently for themselves Correct. and basically, again, learn from the good past of mid-century mm -hmm. for a future that hopefully will be like that again. There we and are. So with that, we're at the end of the show. There we are. Hopefully we see you guys again uh, for our next show, which is finally looking at another sort of development now back in town on Alawai, oh, yeah. which we That's call right. basically the exotic beauty and the invasive bees. That's so right. Again, We've got two buildings next to each other. An old one and a new uh, one. Basically looking at it. Yeah. yeah. So until then, stay as exotically comfortable as you can be. Exactly. All right. Emerging. All right. And see you then. Bye bye, guys. All right. That was good. Yeah. That was good. I like us being mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That helps. Good. Yeah. No, and I like it. And I like that it's us cropped and not like a frame. Yeah. Because the frame disturbs the pictures yes. more. Yes. And, and you were right on the projecting thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. Excellent. That was a good suggestion. I'm glad we got that suggestion. Yeah, yeah.